held together by some rubber bands and a little bit of rope. It's another edition of Fast Facts Live. I'm your host, your quiz master of ceremonies, Dan O'Keefe, and I feel a little uncomfortable because immediately as we started, Tom made a quick move over to his computer, like he forgot to set something and now he's working on setting something. Who is Tom? Well, that's Tom. Tom, he's the producer. Hi, Tom. Hi. Did something go wrong? I'm scared. No. Oh, great. No, the music was a little loud, so I turned it down. Something went terribly wrong is all that That's I heard. Not, it wasn't even that. <laughs> How are you? How's your day been going? Oh, hold on, I gotta hit record. Oh, he has to... here we go, folks. You're gonna see the train fall off the tracks. My day is fine. Oh, good. Yeah. Good, I'm glad. Yeah. Anything exciting happen? No. Okay. Um, I went on a bicycle ride today. And let me tell you. Hey, Dan, where'd you ride your bicycle? I rode it down Forest Home Avenue until I got to the top of a hill. And I was like, I don't want to have to climb this hill again. So then I turned around. Because I get to the top of the hill, then I would have to go down. Yeah. And then I'd, <laughs> I'd ride the same way back. So I'd have to oh. go up the hill again. And then go, oh. I saw your confusion. Up the hill both ways. Yeah. Yeah, it's like Five you got miles. to the top of the hill. And then you're like... Well, I don't want to climb that hill again. And it's like, well, you don't have to. Exactly. Because you're at the top of the hill. I could just turn around. You could just turn around and go back down the hill. It was, in general, a boring ride. There's not much to see on Forest Home Avenue in Milwaukee. Did you see forest homes? No, I, there were very few Are those trees. homes for trees? A yes. A forest home is a it, home for a tree? No, it's where the Keebler elves live. Oh. They live in a forest home. And that's something you'll only learn here on Fast Facts Live. Another thing you'll learn is how to play the game. Here is how to play Fast Facts Live. Hello, I am Charty. Welcome to season six of Fast Facts Live. Here's how to play. There will be five rounds of five questions each. You will have 20 seconds to answer each question. There is no penalty for guessing. So if you don't know an answer, guess. You follow along and answer in Charty Bot. When you submit an answer for a question, Charty Bot will automatically move you forward to the next question. You can check the letterboard in the menu in Charty Bot. No matter where you are, hitting resume will bring you back to answering questions. You can double or nothing one round per game. Charty Bot will ask you at the end of each round if you want to use it. If you got every question correct in that round, your score for that round will double. If you got at least one question wrong in that round, you will get zero points for the entire round. You can wager between zero and ten points for the Hail Mary question after round five. If you answer incorrectly you will lose the amount you wagered, so wager cautiously. A tiebreaker question will be asked to everyone after the Hail Mary, but will only apply to teams tied for first place. Don't cheat, think fast, and have fun. Welcome to Fast Facts Live, good luck. Now that we've learned how to play Fast Facts Live, we're going to see who to play Fast Facts Live. When to play Fast Facts Live. I watched Infinity War today. So when Drax oh, yeah. goes, why is Gamora? <laughs> it, it was very funny. Oh, good. Um, anyway, here are the teams. We got the half vax Drama Goons, Hectic Boomers Hush Puppies, Tiptoe Through the Tulips, my other car is a Yachty 2000. Fans of D and T. Ouch. I see no god here, except for me. The Permit Crab. Olaf's cool kids who want it to stop snowing. One perfectly poached egg. Bad sports. Bernie Madoff wearing Joker makeup. James Pond. Kate Lepp. Mal by herself. Dennis Tracy. Jomo's Mojo. Opa and Groovy Gals. Thank you all for playing. We've got good trivia for you coming up. And that is all the promise that I can make legally under the penalty of perjury. It's just good. It's good. I was kind of happy with what we came up with this week. I was too, especially because when I was going through the keynote, which I actually did this week, uh, and I didn't just skim through, I like read through, I saw two spelling mistakes on your part. I left all of your spelling mistakes in the Google Sheet. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go back and find yours, you can. No. Okay. <laughs> I refuse. 
I don't want to own up to any of my mistakes. I just want to place blame on someone else because I'm a good person. Um, so, because I'm such a good person, let's get into the game so you don't have to hear me ramble anymore. First round is about sports ownership. Own a million, multi-million dollar franchise, but rely on taxes to fund your stadium. Oh wait, this is supposed to be fun. Abolish publicly funded stadiums. Stan Kroenke has like five billion dollars. He can build a stadium. He did though. Okay. <laughs> Bad example. As much as I hate him, he he does fund his own stadiums. <laughs> Except Praise the one in St. Stan. Louis. Except the one that was going to be in St. Louis. We know why. Round one, question one. When asked his opinion of the new owner of the Minnesota Timberwolves, Anthony Edwards said he had no idea who he was. Who is the new owner? 20 seconds. Question number two. The two most recent American teams to compete in Formula One were founded by two men with the same last name. Believe it or not, they're not related at all. But what is the last name? Question number three. The lack of vitamin D would cause what skeletal disorder, otherwise known as the family who owns the Chicago Cubs? What's the family? Number four, what is the only North American professional sports team to be publicly owned? Which means it can be publicly shamed. And our last sports owner question. The Walt Disney Company were the original owners of what sports team? That is it for sports ownership. If you understand NFTs, I have a feeling that you did well in that category. Uh, if you don't, congratulations on going outside every once in a while. I'm very proud of you. Uh, you may notice the head that has appeared behind me. Well, guess what? That is the head of one Trish. And also, my head is blocking the head of my brother Brian. They have both joined the wall which you can join by hitting enable camera on the screen right there. And you can show up behind me, show up on the wall, have some fun. Sometimes some hijinks happen on that wall. Be like Matt Damon, join the wall. Uh, we are going to move on to round two, which is perfect because round two is about countries in Asia. It's a big continent over there. Not that one, the other one, you're almost there. Nope, that is South America. You're close, but nowhere at all. Question number one. After China and India, what is the third most populous country in Asia? 20 seconds. Number two. What Chinese special administrative region has a name meaning fragrant harbor? Number three. 
Number three. Bordered mainly by Thailand and Vietnam, what is the only landlocked country in Southeast Asia? Question number four. Speaking of landlocked countries, the world's second largest landlocked country is also in Asia. What country is it? And last one. Spelling test! What country, bordering Turkey to the north and Iran to the south, proclaimed its independence from the Soviet Union on August 30th, 1991? And that is it for countries of Asia. If you had a United States public school education, I would recommend not doubling or nothing <laughs> so on <true>. that round. <laughs> um, I think that we spent maybe a week over 12 grades learning about Asian countries other than Japan, Korea, and China. So. I did have to label every country in the world on a map in high school. Uh -huh. But did you learn anything about them? Not really. Yeah. I didn't know the capital, though. Oh. I don't remember hardly any of them. Capital there. of Cambodia. I honestly couldn't tell you. You could have said anything. <laughs> I don't know. Is it Santiago? That's, That's one chilly. of them. It's chilly. I often confuse. <laughs> Cambodia and Chile. Hey Siri, what is the capital of Cambodia? Although you did mix South America and Phnom Asia. Penh is the capital of Phnom Cambodia. Phnom Penh. Oh, that Phnom is definitely Penh. not one I learned. Is, well, that a, is there a different name for it? We'll learn. We're going to take a break and look up the rest of the capitals of the countries in Asia. Uh, do Nam put down that pen because we will be right back. That was forced, so stay tuned.
Thank you to Caroline and AJ for providing entertainment during that break, and Trish for providing Brian's arms during that break. You can join the fun I didn't even too. Realize she was doing that. Join the. I knew she was doing it because Brian never moves like that. His arms don't move like that. He doesn't shake and shimmy with his thumbs. No, it never. Uh, you can join the fun too. Join the wall. It's fun. You saw how it was. It can be whatever you want. It's a wild west out there, man. Uh, let's go over the answers for rounds one and two. In sports ownership. When asked his opinion on the new owner of the Timberwolves, Anthony Edwards said he has no idea who he is, who is the new owner. Well, he's not Jenny from the block, he's Alex Rodriguez. The two most recent American teams to compete in Formula One were founded by two men with the same last name who are not related at all. They are Haas. The first one was Do Haas, and the second one was Don't Haas. Do you know their actual names? No. Oh, one's Gene. The new, Gene. the the current one is Gene. He owns half of a NASCAR team and the whole F1 team. The front half or the back half? The side half. The right oh, half. Oh, yeah. the drive. The passenger. The driver's on the left. The driver's in the middle. <laughs> but Cars. He, he man. made he made his fortune in CNC machines. It's like CNC Music Factory, gonna make you sweat. Everybody dance now. No, the CNC like the drill on a 3D printer robot thing. These are all words that separately I completely get. But together, it's like it's a foreign language. Question number three. The lack of vitamin D would cause what skeletal disorder, otherwise known as what family who owns the Chicago Cubs, one of whom is the governor of Nebraska? It's the Ricketts family. What is the only North American professional sports team to be publicly owned? That is the Green Bay Packers. Which mean, and you know that because if you meet someone from Wisconsin within the first three minutes of talking to them, they will let you know if they are a part owner of the Packers. Or what number in line they are to be season ticket yeah. holders. Oh, I'm only the 3,942nd person in line to be a uh, season ticket holder, so I'll get it by the time I die. Fairly certain I'm in like the 17,000s. Good lord, man. Just get a really tall sizzle lift. Sizzle lift? Yeah, the, 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 the things. Does it play sizzle music as you go up? <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> Question five. The Walt Disney Company were the original owners of what sports team? The Anaheim Ducks. The Mighty Ducks, as they were once known. They also owned the Angels, but were not the original owners of the Angels. God is. Round number two. Countries in Asia. After China and India, what is the third most populous country in Asia? That is Indonesia. With over 300 million um, inhabitants, I think. Wow. Yeah, it's the fourth largest country in the world. China, India, China, US. India, US, Indonesia. Hmm. Slips under the radar. Question two. What Chinese special administrative region has a name meaning fragrant harbor? It's that, Macau. It's Macau. It's, it's Hong not, Kong, you it's fool! Not, it's not Macau. Macau's, you, Macau's the other one. You dummy boy! <laughs> There were two words oh, here. Oh, I totally forgot to change the answer. Which part of president this <laughs> and wife celebrated their first anniversary in 1947, although later the president did say he committed adultery in his heart. That's right, President Hong Kong. Can you tell that we just copy and paste the last keynote to make the next week's keynote? I couldn't. <laughs> Question three. Bordered mainly by Thailand and Vietnam, what is the only landlocked country in Southeast Asia? Laos. Question four. Speaking of landlocked countries, the world's second largest landlocked country is also in Asia. What country is it? It's Mongolia. Bonus points. What's the world's largest landlocked country? Tom? Uh, can you give me a continent? No. Because okay. I don't know. I think it's Africa. I think it's got to be Africa. It has to be. A, I, it's probably an African country. It's probably, I'm, I, I can kind of point to it on a map. It's like right on the, look behind you. Uh -huh. It's on the map where it says Africa, right? Sudan? Like Sudan. Well, Sudan split to South Sudan. Oh, it might be the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Yeah. Or uh, Niger, the, yeah. Chad. Yeah. You're just naming African countries at this point. South Africa? 
I'm what? landlocked by water. <laughs> Question five. Hawaii. Yeah. It's Hawaii country. <laughs> spelling test. What country bordered Turkey on the north and Iran to the south? Uh, I said spelling test. A lot of you said Kyrgyzstan. But it's Azerbaijan. And the two of you that got it correct also spelled it correct. No one else even got close. So proud of you. That's it. Let's ready to move on to round number three. This is our visual round. Name that fish. We'll show you pictures of fish. You give us their names, but don't call them like Harry or Greg or his name is Kevin. You won't get any points for that. If you don't know it, you could give him a fun name, but you only get points if you get the actual species name of the fish. And the winner of this specific round will get to spin the wheel of fish. The what now? The what? The what? I'll, don't, I'll pull it up for you. Uh. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fish number one. Who's this sassy little gentleman? Fish number two. Oh, I forget what this one's called. Before we move on to uh, fish number three, I, I need to show you the wheel of fish. Ha ha! Ha ha! Damn, what is going on? It's the wheel of fish! <laughs> From what? From the wheel of fish. Okay, okay. Come on. Do we have the copyright? <laughs> no! To show that? <laughs> no, we don't! Question three. What fish is this? Fish number four. I guess you could say forsh. You shouldn't though. And fish number five. Fish. That is it for our fish round. Uh, I would like to give a special thanks to Weird Al Yankovic and the film UHF for providing us the gift of the Wheel of Fish. If you didn't name, answer every question with a fish name related to Hootie of Hootie and the Blowfish fame, try doubling or nothing. If you're my parents, I do like the creativity of Hootie, Hootie Jr., Hootie's grandma, Hootie's uncle, and Hard Metal Hootie. Oh, Hard Metal Hootie's my favorite Hootie. Yeah, it's my favorite Smash Bros. character, too. <laughs> Let's move on to round four. Round four is Prohibition. Probst. Prohibition. I'm sorry, gnome. Question one. Which amendment established the prohibition of alcohol in the United States? What's the number? Question number two. Prohibition allowed the Mafia to turn themselves into a sophisticated criminal enterprise, with which leader of the Chicago outfit becoming one of the most notorious gangsters of the era?
Question number three. Which city had, by estimate, 30,000 illegal speakeasies during Prohibition? Next one. Two organizations worked closely together to fight for and defend Prohibition. One was the Women's Christian Temperance Union, and the other was what infamous group still around today? And the last question. Passed in 1933, which amendment finally ended prohibition after 13 largely ineffective years? That is it for round four. If you're a good old booze hound and a moonshiner who runs a still in the backwoods of West Virginia, double or nothing that round. Or if you're not that and you think you did well, double or nothing too. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I will shill ourselves out for money and we'll have more trivia on Fast Facts Live. So don't go anywhere.
We're back at Fast Facts Live, and I'd really like to go to the wall real quick because we got some more friends there. <laughs> seven people, well, I say seven people in quotes because three of them <laughs> are one person. <laughs> Caroline and AJ are still partying. Brian and Trish up in the corner. I need to make sure that I get this right. That's Tom, correct? Well, that's Tom. I know that's Tom, but that, that is also Tom, Tom, Tom on screen. Awesome! Wonderful. Also, Angela and Catherine in the background. Um, and then in the middle... Did Catherine get... No, wait. Is that... Or, no, that's That's Anna. Anna. That's not Catherine. That's the woman I live with. <laughs> did she get Chinese? She did. <sighs> she got Mugu Chicken. Also oh, in the middle that's a great um, idea. is the Monopoly Man dressed up as the all-seeing eye on top of the pyramid from the back of the $1 bill. Um, <laughs> again, if you would like to join this party of fun, you can! Just enable your camera and join the wall. In the meantime, let's go over the answers for rounds three and four. Round three, name that fish! You all did very poorly! Fish number one, I, I say that, I would have gotten zero of these correct. Uh, this fish is the cuttlefish, with two T's, not two D's. Two D's would be the implant fish. Question two. This is Dory, and Dory is a blue tang. I thought tang was orange, and an astronaut food. And powdery. Yeah. Oh God, is that where they get it from? Fish number three. No, oh, he looks scared, because he's a little puffer fish. Puff, puff, puffer, puffer, pass. <laughs> Fish number four. Cod. I don't have a lot to say about these because I don't know anything about fish. I don't like fish in general when I'm swimming or when I'm eating. So I tend to stay away from them. And fish number five. Looks like Metal Mario. It's a tuna. Uh, technically a yellow-tailed tuna, according to Tom. Yellow fin tuna. I, but adding another T makes it a lot more fun to say. <laughs> Yellow-tailed tuna, according to Tom. So many yes. tuh sounds. The tip of the tongue taking a trip down the teeth to stop at three on the teeth, low li ta. I remember that warm-up from theater. <laughs> I saw it. I was watching Caroline's reaction because I'm like, she's going to react to this. <laughs> uh, now it's time for Prohibition. Stop drinking, Caroline. Question one. Which amendment established the prohibition of alcohol in the United States? That was the 18th Amendment. Prohibition allowed the Mafia to turn themselves into a sophisticated enterprise, and the Chicago outfit was led by Al Capone, who was arrested for mail fraud. Which city had, by estimate, 30,000 illegal speakeasies during the era? That was New York! Concrete Creed jungle where dreams are made of, and is also alcohol in the 20s! And also the 30s. Question four. Two organizations worked closely together to fight for and to defend prohibition. So that's a strong strike one. Uh, one was the Women's Christian Temperance Union and the other was what infamous group still around today? And the strong strike two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine thousand other strikes was that it was the Ku Klux Klan. Good old KKK. The worst people. And question five. Passed in 1933, which amendment finally ended prohibition after 13 largely ineffective years? That was the 21st Amendment. Signed into law by which president? 1933? Yes. I mean, that was before FDR, right? No, it was not. It, it was, FDR. was FDR. Yeah. He won in 1932. Before him was Hoover. Mm. Mm. And then 
he was president for a very long time. Yes. He was so popular they had to make a law saying that nobody else could be this popular again. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> anyway, before we move on to round five, Tom, can I be in full, please? Hi. Goodbye. <laughs> Hi again. I'm televangelist Dan O'Keefe, and I run a church. Not a religious church, mind you, but a mind church. Uh, a church devoted to the growth of knowledge. It's called Fast Facts Live. And I say that I run it because I'm the face. Um, but the real brains and power behind the operation are Tom. And Tom doesn't eat food. Tom eats cold, hard cash. So if you would like Fast Facts Live to continue chugging along at the pace that it is, uh, and not being a total technical disaster, not being a total advertising disaster, all of that. We need to feed Tom some of that sweet green, those good old dollar dollar bills, y'all. And the way that you can do that is by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash fastfactslive. We have various tiers of support that you can give us, which have various tiers of prizes, not prizes, but basically prizes for, that you get when you sign up. Um, you can subscribe and get prizes for as little as $4, or you can set whatever amount. It could be $1 a month. That's up to you. Uh, if you don't want to do that, if you want to give us a one-time quick infusion of cash, like we're walking around the pews with the money dish, and I'll glare at you if you don't give at least a 50, um, you can, in Chartybot, by just hitting the tip jar and giving what you want. Uh, but really, the best way that you can support us, spread the word, tell your friends, get them to give us money. It's like a Ponzi scheme. I wonder if that's relevant today. That's it. <laughs> Tom's just staring, just looking. Do we need to feed you? I did a sound effect. Oh, good. <laughs> Again, I can't hear them. I don't know. There could be sound effects underneath me the entire time. Oh, it looks like Tom is looking at Tom. And he popped up again. It's beautiful. Um, again, Car Caroline enjoys this way too. Caroline much. does enjoy this very much. She is also very much enjoying her Mike's Hard Lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the best part. Uh, okay, let's go into round five. It is our toss up round. Anything could be here, it could be anything. Question number one Wiener Schnitzel is one of the national dishes of what European country? Question number two. On this day in 2003, what did humans successfully sequence 99% of with 99.99% .99 accuracy? That's a lot of nines! Question number three. Which gland regulates your metabolism, specifically you? Question number four. 1.25 tons of radioactive water was recently approved to be dumped into my mouth and also into the Pacific. Water that used to be used in what power plant? And question five. 
Arclight Cinemas and Pacific Theaters announced that they would be closing permanently on Monday, putting the future of what Hollywood dome-shaped theater in jeopardy? That's it for our toss-up round, which means that there's only one round left, and that is our Hail Mary round, which means... It's that we... one question. It's not a whole round. It's a whole round... Of one question. Of one question. So, it's of equal length. Um, it's the super-duper hard question. Place your bets, place your wagers to give you a clue, a category on the round. Um, it is... I'm going to go with a, a Jeopardy round. Uh, potent potables. Potent potables. No. Um, I'm trying to... How to word this correctly. Um, film adaptations. So do with that what you will. Uh, I'm going to give you about 10 more seconds before we go into the Hail Mary. So take your time. Think of a wager. Doesn't matter, you're betting 10 anyway. I know all of you. Uh, and with that, let's go into the Hail Mary question. Frank Norris's 1899 novel, McTeague, has been adapted into film twice. First in 1916's McTeague, and second in 1924 with what film? Written and directed by Eric von Stroheim, which has an uncut version that is referred to as the Holy Grail for film archivists. 20 seconds, give it your all. Bada bing, bada boom, that is the end for the Hail Mary question, which means that it's time for the tiebreaker, just in case there is one. So, Bernie Madoff died in prison today. Um, what would be the amount of returns he promised his investors divided by the years he ended up spending in prison? Remember, he ran the biggest Ponzi scheme in history, and he spent not all that long in prison. So what's the number? That's it. That's all the questions. We will take a break. We will have the winner after that break. In the meantime, everyone, join the wall! Have some fun with the other players of the game. We'll be right back.
We're back. Look at, look at that. Look at how many people we have on the wall. We got technically seven. Actually, we do have seven people. Uh, it's just that three of the screens on the screen are still Tom. Um, and Aiden has also appeared, along with Evan, Caroline, AJ, Brian, and Trish. What a fun gaggle of people. Gaggle's a number. Our, um, next, our next set should have a green screen behind you with the wall gigantic. That's an option. <laughs> I'll write that down. Okay. In my death notebook. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> no, that would be fun. Because then we could throw anything on the green screen. Anything. Like the wheel of fish. We could incorporate a wheel of fish. Every week. <laughs> they could spin it from their phone. The loser gets to spin the wheel of fish. The <gasps> person with the idea. lowest score. I love this idea. Gets the opportunity to... Sp there's a fly in here now. It's the... Uh, Gets the opportunity to spin the wheel of fish. See, this is this is the collaboration that we get. Mm -hmm. Spitballing, yes, Spitballing. and this is a this is improv. a brainstorming session. Improv, yes, and yes, and we do a green screen and yes. a wheel of fish for the loser. We make a green screen out of fish. The loser spins a wheel of fish, and there's like one little sliver of it that's like a five dollar Amazon gift card. Uh -huh. Everything else is fish. So yes. if they land, so it's like a redemption thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's really funny. <laughs> Could totally do that. It's like the million dollar sliver yes. in Wheel of Fortune and the rest is all bankrupt. Yeah. But it's fish. Yes. Anyway, you I bet you're wondering who won. I'll hear the answer for toss-up. Vina schnitzel is one of the national dishes of which European country? I got really excited because the first person who answered got it wrong, and I was like, <laughs> everybody's going to answer the wrong country. You didn't. Most of you answered correctly. It's Austria. Because Germany would have been too easy for you, wouldn't it? Question two. Well, it's the human genome. And there's the question two. My computer decided that you don't want me to read it. Question three. Which gland regulates your metabolism? It's the thyroid. Not the pituitary. The thyroid. Question four. 1.25 tons of radioactive water was recently approved to be dumped into the Pacific. Water that was used in what power plant? That was in the Fukushima Daiichi power plant. Uh, that, of course, that was the site of the nuclear meltdown following the earthquake in Japan. And that was 2011? So that was 10 years ago. Wow. Seriously? Yeah, at least it might have been 11 years ago. I don't know if it's 2010 or 2011. I thought it was 2014. No, no, it was definitely before I was in high school. So yeah, time flies. Question five. Arclight Cinemas and Pacific Theaters announced that they will be closing permanently, putting the future of what Hollywood dome-shaped theater in jeopardy? That is the Cinerana, Cinerama Dome. It was 2011. 2011, uh, Cinerama Dome, not to be confused, with the Sin with an S Arama Dome, which you can find in Las Vegas. The Hail Mary question. A lot of you bet 10 points on this. Frank Norris's 1899 novel McTeague has been adapted into film twice. First with 1916's McTeague, and second in 1924 with what film? Written and directed by Eric von Stroheim, which has an uncut version that is referred to as the Holy Grail for film archivists. It's referred to as that because no one's been able to find it. It was eight hours long. Uh, the version that was released in theaters was a little under two hours, and one with partially recreated footage and stills that they aired on TCM in the late 90s was four hours, and this film was called Greed. One team got this correct. I'm very proud of them. Um, the, speaking of greed, Bernie Madoff died in prison today. What would be the amount of returns he promised his investors divided by the years he ended up spending in prison? He only spent 11, 12 years in prison? Spent 12 years in prison. Yeah. Um, so... He ran a $63 billion hedge fund. Yeah. So that amount was five billion four hundred and sixteen million. the devil's number, the devil's number, and 67 cents. That's a lot of money. I think it's appropriate that it's the devil's number twice. Yeah. 
Well, on a <laughs> lighter note, we have a winner. Um, and it is our largest margin of victory, I can say with pretty much absolute certainty. We have never had a team win by this much. So let's start at the bottom and see who did not win by much. They'll be spinning the fish wheel next season. I know. <laughs> Cod, 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 cod. Amazon. Cod. Uh, in 18th place with one point, we see, I see no cod here, God here. Except for me with one point. With two points, Bad Sports has 17 points. In 16th, Opa has three points. In a tie for sixth, Olaf's Cool Kid, no, in a tie with six in 13th. Olaf's Cool Kids Who Wanted to Stop Snowing, Jomo's Mojo, and Hectic Boomer's Hush Puppies. In a tie in 11th, we have Mal by herself and Ouch with seven points. In 10th, my other car is a Yachty 2000 with eight points. In 9th, with nine points, fans of d &T. In 7th, Groovy Gals and one perfectly poached egg with 10 points. In 5th, the half-vaxxed Drama Goons and Bernie Madoff wearing Joker makeup with 11 points. In a tie for second, we have James Pond tiptoe through the tulips. And the Permit Crab with 14 points, which means that in first place, remember, second place had 14 points. In first place, with 34 points, we have Dennis Tracy. Congratulations to Dennis Tracy on what is the largest win in Fast Facts Live history. Come back next week and see if you can double your score. Scientists don't believe that it could happen. <laughs> <laughs> um... Since you are not a patron, Danis Tracy, you will be receiving a $10 Amazon gift card uh, in your email as prize for this week. If you were a patron, you would receive a $15 Amazon gift card. So just a little bit of incentive, because now that you have $10, you can afford to become a patron and then maybe win a $15 Amazon gift card. Give to our church, the Church of Immaculate Profit. Um... <laughs> Thank you all for playing We this are a week. poor, for-profit institution. We are incredibly for-profit. Since we're a church, we're for profit and also for profit with an E. Like the like a prophet, like a biblical prophet. Yeah. And then also like a money. <laughs> thank you all for playing this week. A very special thank you to our patrons and to our Twitch czar, Dennis Tracy, and our social media manager, Molly Von Eschenbach. Uh, thank you, Tom for producing the show. And Thank you for hosting. Run. You're welcome, as always. One day I won't say you're welcome. Oh. And I'll light the set on fire. Oh. Um, the thank set you. is my apartment. <laughs> I know, and it's hardwood, baby. It's gonna burn for days. And it's ancient. <laughs> it is. There are, there are floorboards in my apartment that I'm like, if I wear staticky clothing above this, this is gonna light on fire. Uh, anyway, thank you again to all of you for playing. Also, thank you to everybody on the wall. I enjoy your waves very much. Goodbye. We will see you next week. In the meantime, I have been and will continue to be Dan O'Keefe. Come back next week. Same fact time, same fact channel. Stay safe. Have fun. Wear a mask. Bye-bye.